On this week's show, the Georgia Southern baseball team continues their success on the road as they prepare for a big three-game series at home against nationally ranked Clemson. And the Georgia Southern softball team gets things underway in the Sun Belt Tournament. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. Eagles and welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, the Georgia Southern baseball team above our shoulder, we shouldn't even show their home uh, pictures. We should show pictures of them on the road because that's where they've been so successful. They've struggled at home, been lights out on the road, to be honest. I mean, you go to the number one seed who hasn't lost a home series. I don't believe they lost a series. They hadn't lost a home game in conference play so far. Or a series in Sunbelt play and Georgia Southern goes in there and does both. So that's very impressive. They went on Friday behind who knows, uh, no, no surprise rather, Evan Challenger pitching a great game and they finally give them a little bit of run support and then the bullpen lets it go and then they come back and win that game. Game two, they win another fairly low scoring game. Sack Fly wins the game in extra innings. And then they have run rule on, couldn't, couldn't keep it together for three straight games. Your thoughts on where the baseball team is right now as they get ready for four straight non-conference games. Well, as you said, uh, really big to get those wins on the road and Georgia Southern's been racking them up. Haven't lost a conference road series yet this season. Haven't lost any road series outside of the very first weekend of the year up at Georgia. Since then, it's been lights out on the road. Evan Challenger, you've really got to give him credit. He's been the ace the entire way, the Friday starter for each of the last two years. And he's had some tough luck losses along the way a couple of times. Some late runs cost him a victory. A few times, a lack of offensive support cost him a victory. But this might have been his best win yet, going up against the presumptive uh, pitcher of the year in Kevin Hill. He's made everybody look foolish throughout the season, 8-2 and two going into that game, but the Eagles get the better of them. They come back on Saturday to get to Sunday. Maybe we can forget about a little bit. A lot of people wouldn't have expected much more than one win, much less two. Exactly what the Eagles need is they continue to fight for positioning as that conference tournament gets a little closer, and for the Eagles, just one more conference series. North Florida midweek, two games, one there, one home. And then this weekend coming up, they're facing a nationally ranked Clemson team. Your thoughts on the importance of this? Or really, I guess one of the biggest things that's important for Georgia Southern right now is to find that number three starter. Uh, number three starter, the Sundays have looked a little bit uh, uh, less... Uh, uh, Impressive? It's been a, yeah, it's been a little <laughs> shakier as far as the pitching's gone. The bullpen's only so deep. The starters have done a good job of saving the bullpen innings on Friday and Saturdays, but going into the conference tournament where we've seen it before, you can have to play six games in five days, and that requires every arm you've used, probably some you haven't used a lot of. So I think these next four or five non-conference games, it's going to be a little bit of a test of guys who haven't been put in big spots, maybe getting put in higher leverage situations. Maybe the starters don't go quite as long as you're used to seeing, and then you've got to ramp it up for that final conference series against Georgia State, get the best seed you can, maybe keep Georgia State from having a seed at all in the playoff or in the tournament and then go out to San Marcos, where as you said last week, probably better it's on the road. Go out to San Marcos, Texas and see what kind of damage they can do in the tournament. Right now where the Eagles looks like they're probably going to, can't finish much higher than fourth, and they'll probably finish fourth, fifth, or sixth, you would imagine, going into the tournament. And in that tournament, I, I guess it's not set up the way softball is, which we're about to get into, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different. So if Georgia Southern goes in as a four seed, five seed, They'll, they'll probably be in a pretty good spot. They're still gonna probably have to face the number one seed, but if that one seed is the team they just took two or three of, maybe you go in knowing, hey, we can do this against these guys. As for the softball team, we just mentioned they lost to Georgia State, and that was pretty significant because now they are going to have to play an extra game as opposed to if they would have gotten the three or the four seed where you get an extra buy. They, the one and two, I guess, get two buys, which is much like the, the mm -hmm. basketball tournament. The three and four get one buy, and then the other ones all have to play an extra game, 
which is pretty bad. You don't want to play as many games. Obviously, it's better to, to sit it. And I think the Sun Belt does it in basketball because they don't want to have that number one seed upset. I think in, in the Sun Belt and softball, they have a chance of sending two teams to the postseason. They want to protect them as much as they can. They do, but I think that having that lack of a buy or lack of a double buy in softball a little bit less detrimental than it would be in basketball where a it's single elimination in basketball you lose one and you're gone in softball double elimination you've got at least one chance for a bad day but also the the amount of games that you'll have to play in softball not as big an issue you might get tired legs in basketball and softball if you've got two pitchers that heat up for one weekend, they can easily carry you, no matter what your seat is, all the way through. They can throw back-to-back -back days. They can throw two games in one day if they have to. So that's definitely a plus for Georgia Southern, who has one of the best pitchers in the conference and looks to for the next few years. Single elimination in the early rounds for the softball tournament, which makes it a little confusing. Then it's double elimination after that. You mentioned Dixie Riley, she's been great all year. The Eagles have also beaten Lafayette, so at least they can lean on that. When you go forward as in, they're beatable. We've done it and we can do it again. And speaking of Dixie Riley, a great stat to throw out there. How many teams do you know, baseball, softball, whatever, where the same person leads a team in both wins, 22, and saves, three. Saves not as common in softball, but the team leader in both wins and saves, something you don't see every day. Well, Mike, shifting gears a little bit, Tyson Summers, not the only Summers now, that will be uh, on the field for Georgia Southern. I guess he'll technically be on the sidelines, but he'll be on the field some, I imagine. But Mike Summers, who played his high school football and basketball, for that matter, over at Statesboro High, went to Georgia Tech, was there for three years, has graduated from Georgia Tech, still has a year of eligibility, He's coming to, to uh, Statesboro to play for Georgia Southern his senior year. Your thoughts on that? Well, no telling where exactly uh, Michael Summers will fit in uh, to begin fall camp, but you do know that he's got a lot of talent. He quickly worked his way into the starting rotation at Georgia Tech, was a big part of some of their better teams of recent, uh, of recent seasons. And I would say that the, the one thing that he really has going for him is we've talked on and on about what the offense will look like, how much more passing will come into it. He seems like a pretty good stopgap in between you know, the old A-backs and slot backs getting pitches in the uh, flex bone triple option that he's been running at Georgia Tech, and now a more spread out version. We know he can catch the ball. We know he can run with the ball. You know that with the size, he can throw a block too. So I'm not quite sure what exactly the offense is going to look like come September, but I'm pretty sure that Mike Summers has whatever tools are going to be necessary. Nice to see a local guy back here on the field. We had a chance to talk with Mike Summers about returning home to play for Georgia Southern. It's, it's a lot of change, um, a lot of positive change. You know, things look a lot different. Things are a lot more attractive, you know, and um, it's very good for the program and it's very good, you know, for the city of Statesboro. You know, it gives us something to have pride in. You know, it gives us something to look forward to on Saturdays. And uh, that's what means the most to us here. Last time you squared off against Georgia Southern, kind of a bit of a bar burner that I don't know if you guys are really expecting. Mm -hmm. Going into it, we knew, you know, that the program that was coming in was a program that competed every day. You know, they competed every summer in workouts, every spring in practice, you know, so we knew that going into it. You know, things, you know, went left quick because, you know, at Southern you're taught to never give up, to talk, you know, to be relentless. And um, we let up, but hey, look, I'm on the other side now. <laughs> now you got to go to Georgia Tech. How weird is that going to be in the middle of October going and being on the other side of the field? Um, <laughs> well, it's going to be fun, um, you know, and as I've told a lot of people, you know, that's definitely not the reason why I came here. Um, you know, um, it's going to be fun, but my purpose for being here is to give the community of Statesboro something to look up to and to give the youth something to follow. You know, because coming from here as a kid growing up in Statesboro, you think it's it's nearly impossible to get out, you know, and I did it, you know, and I went to, to the Honey Bowen Building and registered to play tackle football at Mill Creek. I did that. I walked the halls of Langston Chapel Elementary, Langston Chapel Middle School, and I did it, and I came back, and I'm giving back to my community, so that's what it's about. Coaching staff here, familiar name. Oh, yeah. Coach Summers. <laughs> uh, under, your thoughts on, on what Georgia Southern has to offer on the football field, and how are you 
feeling about playing for Coach Summers? Well, you know, Coach Summers recruited me when he was at UAB when I was in high school. And so uh, it's very, it's very humbling, you know, to come in and be able to um, make an impact on a program, you know, what I have to offer. Um, but most importantly, you know, it's great to also build a, a new network when it comes to meeting people, you know, because that's what it's all about, communication. Letting people know, you know, what you want to do, what you want to get done, and I'm excited to get started. Any kind of offense they run, you've been kind of familiar with, if they run something with the option, you know how to block, you know how to catch, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's got to all be something that fits in well for you. Oh yeah, well, you know, I'm an athlete, so I, I can adjust to many different situations. You know, I can get back there and catch a kickoff return, I can catch a punt return, I can take a handoff in the backfield, I can throw it, I can do it all. So, you know, coming to Georgia Southern very, really gives me the opportunity to showcase my athleticism. And that's what I've been wanting to do since I started playing football. Well, Mike, before we go, you're wearing your Tormenta shirt. That is, of course, the local minor league team here in Bullock County that will be kicking things off coming up this week and they'll be home, I guess, when is the first uh, home the game? The 21st will be their first home game. A couple of uh, Georgia Southern players on the team, a couple of local guys that will be on their practice squad. Exciting, there'll be something for you to do this summer. Sounds like from the uh, tickets, there'll be a pretty good crowd on hand. Your thoughts on the Tormenta starting the season? Here? Well, this seems to be a perfect fit for Statesboro in the summer. Usually we've just about got to sign off here in the uh, in the summer months with Georgia Southern with high schools all winding down, even youth sports kind of fades out by about June. But now there's finally something for the people of Statesboro who can't get enough of their sports to go do May, June, July, on into the early weeks of August. We'll have it every season now. Uh, Tormenta FC, it's composed mostly of college players, a couple of uh, foreign players, all of them looking to take that next step up, maybe someday get to the MLS or another professional league. And I know that uh, there's been a, a buzz about it. You mentioned the ticket sales. It should be a pretty fun summer. All right, we'll check our website and check the paper to see the upcoming games for Tormenta FC. With that for now, that'll wrap things up. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.